There's not a day that goes by that we don't get an email or comment on one of our videos asking questions like, what video editor do you use? Or how do you edit your videos? So coming up, I will show you how to use the video editing software, Adobe Premiere Pro. This guide for beginners will primarily cover the basics to help you get started, along with a few tips included for intermediate users as well. Let's get to it. If you don't have Premiere Pro installed yet, you can purchase it separately or as part of the Creative Cloud suite for both Windows and Mac OS. I highly advise that you take advantage of the seven day free trial before buying it to find out how well it runs on your system. Premiere Pro is an absolute beast. To meet the minimum specs for Windows, your computer must have the 64-bit version of Windows, at least 8GB of RAM, and 2GB of GPU VRAM. The minimum specs to run Premiere Pro on macOS are very similar. As many of you know that have watched other beginner's guides on our channel, we cut out the fat to make things as simple and less convoluted as possible. I'll go at a slower pace than usual. At the end of this video, if you don't skip any sections, you'll know the basics of how to edit a video. First, let's open Premiere Pro. I'll be opening it using the Creative Cloud app. So I'll scroll down here to find the latest version and click on Open. Prior to beginning a new project, I find it best to have all assets like video, images, and audio in a single folder. For this video, I created this new folder on my desktop called Video Tutorial, which contains content from another video on this channel. I'll now move this folder out of the way to another monitor for the remainder of this video. In the left pane, if you were to continue working on an existing project, you would select Open Project. But in this video, we'll pretend like we're working on a brand new project, so select New Project. Here at the top, give your project a name. We'll just call this one PP Tutorial. Below that, select the location you'd like your project to be saved. So let's go over here to Browse. My folder is here on the desktop. So select it to highlight it and click on Select Folder. I'll show you some of the general settings I have set here for video rendering and playback. I have it set on CUDA. Video format is time code. Display format, just audio samples. And capture format, DV. These are the settings I recommend. Here at the bottom, click on OK. With Premiere Pro, there's a multitude of ways you can perform each task. To avoid any confusion, I'll show you how to perform each task in order for the more basic video projects on this channel. We'll also skip over the user interface tour. This is pretty close to how it looks when you first install it. I've been using it this way for years and have found no reason to change it. I'll discuss each item in more detail as we get to them. The first thing I do is add media to the project. You could import it all at one time by going to File here in the upper left, go down to Import, Select your files and click open. This method might work best for some of you. I prefer to just add one file at a time. So I'll hit cancel. From the folder off screen, I'll left click and drag the first media to the timeline. This is our channel bumper created with After Effects. It's usually at the beginning of a video or right after the short introduction. For this tutorial, I'll keep the sound muted for Premiere Pro. When you add a clip, your video will appear above the timeline. In the timeline, you'll see a blue marker. If you left click on it, you can drag to different parts of the timeline. Anytime you add a new file or make any major changes, it's a good habit to save your project by using the keyboard shortcut Control plus S. On Mac, it's the command key plus S. Do this often because it totally sucks to lose work you've already completed. Most files I work with contain both video and audio. To the left, you can see that it's occupying the V1 and A1 position. With this clip, the audio will be louder than the rest of the video. To fix this, I right click on the media and select Audio Gain. Then I select Set Gain 2 and to lower the volume over here to the right, I'll enter in minus 10. Then click OK. Let's move the blue timeline marker here to the beginning of the video. 
To see more of the timeline, go to the bar here at the bottom, go to the right of the bar where you see the circle, left click and drag right to see more of the timeline. And that's gonna be good enough right there. So about 30 seconds worth. It's now time to add some more media. I will now drag and drop an unedited video clip onto the timeline. Now it's time to have some fun cutting video and edit out the stuff we don't need. So drag the timeline marker to the start position of the clip you want to remove. You can also use the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard to fine tune the position. To add the edit marker, we'll be using a keyboard shortcut. On Windows, that would be the Control key plus K. And on Mac, that would be Command plus K. Using a combination of the timeline marker and arrow keys, choose the endpoint. Using the same keyboard shortcut, hold down Control plus K or Command plus K to mark the end position. I'll move the marker so you can see it. Left click between the start and end to highlight that segment. Then hit the delete key on your keyboard. To bring the separated segments together, left click in the empty space, and once again, hit the delete key on your keyboard. Let me drag the timeline here real quick. I'm gonna get rid of this segment right here from the beginning of the clip to where the marker is. So I'll use the keyboard shortcut again, left click the segment, hit delete on the keyboard, and delete again to remove the empty space. Continue doing this for all media you add to your timeline. On our videos with 10 to 20 video clips, this is the most time consuming process, but it's worth it to make our videos more concise and to the point. After you cut all of your media clips, this is where you would put the finishing touches on your video to make it look more presentable. In other words, this is the stage I refer to as putting lipstick on the pig. Many of you have asked how to zoom in or zoom out on a video clip. Left click on a segment of your video. Move the timeline marker into the highlighted section. Go to Effect Controls, grab the marker, and move it to the far left. Toggle on both position and scale. At this point, I'll leave the positions as they are. I'll bump the scale up to 102 and hit Enter. And I'll take the marker and drag it to the end here and adjust it with the left and right arrow keys to the very end. All right, let's go back to position and scale. Click to the right of each where it says to add a keyframe. And you'll notice the markers here to the right. I'll now increase the scale to 110 and hit enter. Now I'll show you what that looks like by moving the marker back to the left and I'll play the segment by hitting the space bar on my keyboard. If you want more impact when you're zooming in at the end of the segment, just increase the scale. I'll show you an example of that. I'll bump it to 125. Let's play that again. And for zooming out, you would just do the steps I did here in reverse. I've moved on to a different section of the video to show you how to give the illusion of scrolling a web page. This one's not too difficult either. Select a segment. Take the marker here in Effect Controls, drag it all the way to the left. Enable Position and Scale by left-clicking on them. I don't know if you can see this on your screen, but with the mouse cursor over 100, you'll see two arrows. If you just left-click and drag to the left or the right, it'll decrease and increase the scaling. So let's increase this to about 130. And that's good. Move the cursor over 540 and left click, and I'll drag down here to move up the web page. Actually, you just drag to the right to go up the web page, drag to the left to go down the web page. So let's go back up here, and that's good enough. Left click, grab the marker, and drag it all the way to the right. It's a little bit too far. I'll use the arrow keys on my keyboard, move it to the left. Go back to position and scale, and click to add the keyframes. You'll see them here to the right and we'll just move the vertical position downward by dragging to the left. All right, and that's good enough. Let's move the keyframe to the left, and I'll give you a preview of what that looks like by hitting the space bar on my keyboard. Premiere Pro has many built-in transitions for you to use to move from one section to another. Here's an example of how to use them. 
in the timeline. We're back here at the beginning of the video, and I want to transition from the bumper to the next segment. So here at the top, click on Effects. This will be a video transition. So over here to the right, select the arrow to expand the section. You'll see different types listed here. For this one, I'll go with Dissolve and select Cross Dissolve. So I'll left click on it, drag it down to the timeline, and drop it between the bumper and the next section. Now I'll click on it. Currently, it's only active for the bumper, so up here in Effect Controls, and on the very end, I'll left click and drag it to the right. Now I'll hit the space bar on my keyboard and give you a preview. I'm going to drag the transition in a little bit more here. Do it for the other side as well. Make it a little bit shorter. Here's another preview. And there are some others here that are pretty cool. One you may have seen on our videos is the page peel. So I'll select the page turn and drop it where the cross dissolve transition is located. Here's a preview of that real quickly. And do experiment with the other ones to see what works best for you. If you want to add background music, you can get royalty free and copyright free songs from various sources, including the YouTube audio library. To add music you have downloaded to your computer, select the music file. Mine's located off screen in another folder. Drag and drop it onto the timeline below the video. Let's expand this out a bit. Let's go over here to the left. Do you see the two arrows pointing up and down? Right here on the line, left click and drag it down. To increase or decrease the volume of the audio, it's the same procedure I showed you earlier with the intro bumper. Right click the audio, go to audio gain, toggle, set gain to, and to decrease the volume, enter a negative number or use a positive number to increase it. I'll go with minus 24 on this one. And when you're done, click OK. If you want your music to end at a certain point in the video, let's drag to the end of the clip. Here at the very end, you'll see this end bar icon show up. Left click and drag the audio to the left. And we'll have it stop right about here. At the end of this music file, I'm going to add a different audio track after this clip. So I'll grab another one here off screen and drag and drop it. I'll decrease the sound on this one as well. So go back to audio gain, set gain two, and I'll set this one to minus 24. Click OK. In between clips, you can add an audio transition. So here on the right in effects, hit the drop down arrow next to audio transitions. And again for crossfade. And the one I use is constant power. So I'll select it, left click and drag it down to the timeline onto one of the audio clips. I'll click on the transition. Here in effect controls, I'll go to the far left of the bar here and drag it to the left. And that will give you a good transition between audio clips. Instead of going into the weeds to show you every single feature, which would be a five plus hour video, I thought it would be best just to show you the basics of how to edit a video on your own. When you're done, you will need to render and export your project. In the upper left, go to File, Export, and select Media. Here's the export settings I use for videos created for YouTube. Here at the top, the video format is set to H.264. Go to Preset, select the drop down arrow, and you'll find a ton of presets, including those for Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The preset I use is YouTube 1080p Full HD. Give the video an output name. It defaults to the name of the first clip you added to the timeline. So left click on it. Find the folder for your project. And this one was Video Tutorial. Give your clip a name. I'll just call it Video Tutorial. After you've done that, click on Save. With the preset I selected earlier, I'll leave everything else the same. When you're done, here at the bottom, click on Export. When it's finished, you'll be able to view your creation in the folder you saved it to. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this beginner's guide helped you out. If it did, give this video a thumbs up and share with others. And while you're here, if you haven't done so already, subscribe and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss out on our newest tutorials and other tech-related stuff here on Tech Gumbo.